That does mean if there's ever a global economic collapse and someone tries to fix it, some asshole who watched these movies will be like, that's the motherfucker right Wait there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> I've seen minute. like seven movies about this. <laughs> we have to like break into his lair with parkour and kill him. <laughs> oh. Just someone trying to do a cartwheel into Obama's home. Just, <laughs> yeah. Oh God, I sprained my side. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 And welcome back <laughs> to God awful movies, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema. Because Noah said no dessert if we did a show about our favorite races while he was gone. I'm your host Heath Enright this week. And sitting to my immediate left is a, uh, a, a diabetic cat. And sitting 81 miles to my right is a pre-diabetic human, Eli Bosnick. <laughs> Eli, how are your feet feeling this fine afternoon? Still attached. Important. Still attached. Good. Weird, braggy way to open the show. But yeah, still attached. Can feel all my toes <laughs> most of the time. Excellent. Excellent. Good to hear. It's important to keep track of your feet. Mm -hmm. I saw that in the commercial. And and speaking of people without feet, we, we gave it away already. That's something Noah says, so I'm going to do it. So, Heath, tell us, <laughs> what will we be breaking down today? All right. We watched the Mark II Redemption. It's supposed to be the sequel to the Mark that we watched last week and continue the story of a guy with a microchip inside his arm trying to keep it out of evil hands following the rapture. But as we'll find out... It's also the story of one of the writers getting caught at a whorehouse in Bangkok, pretending he was doing research for the movie, and writing in a whole extra plot about that to get away <laughs> with it, which makes no goddamn sense and ruins the narrative, which was already terrible. I hated this movie so much. So it's the, oh my god. <laughs> and uh, Eli, uh, how bad was this movie? Well... If you've watched 102 Christian movies and you're not sure if you're trapped in a heroin nod somewhere between waking and sleeping, <laughs> you will love this movie. Oh, my God. This movie was so... This movie was what I expected last week's movie to be, right? Surprise fat guy brought it home for us. And then there was the guy from The Expendables and Eric Roberts. But this movie hit every single beat of every single movie we've ever watched from bad action to bad... It was painful. Painful. Uh, yeah, it was the absolute worst. Like, I hated every one of the 94 minutes in this entire movie. I hated watching it. It was it was so unpleasant to watch. I took multiple exercise breaks. <laughs> like, like cardio. I don't do that. I ran. I biked. I chose sweaty, wheezy, half vomiting over continuing to watch this movie several times. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, just in case we want to stop in the middle of the review and do something entirely different. Do you have any ideas for just, I don't know, like other topics of discussion, anything really? Or, you know, maybe some stuff we could rank, whatever. Well, I'm glad you asked, Heath. It, it's weird when he's not here to stop us. Oh, yeah, you were waiting. You were, you were waiting. Oh, um, <laughs> no, go ahead. All right. Well, there's. And then I guess there's. <laughs> Doing it in order, or is that just off the top no, of your I'm head in any order? I'm trying to list them all. There's, there's good. Good. Um, yeah. I mentioned. Really? You say, you, I no, you did say you did. Fuck all. Just fuck them right in their faces. <laughs> all right, those were some uh, wonderful, wonderful ideas. And uh, is there anything you'd like to nominate this movie for being the best at being the worst at? Uh, yes, I'm going to go with best worst compliment. Uh, we're gonna get to it. <laughs> I know what it is. Uh, but at one point in this movie, <laughs> the third creepiest thing a human has ever said to another human will be uttered <laughs> as a compliment. Oh, it's fantastic. And they had no idea. None. They had no idea. They were psyched when they wrote that. Absolutely. They were like, oh, that's, that's gonna convey you it. You know, perfectly. the woman who was walking by the writer's room was like, oh, that's sweet. <laughs> Yep. All right. We'll get there. It's going to be glorious. Uh, I'm going to go with best worst 
understanding of fire. Ooh. So for some reason, the rapture in this movie caused infinite fires everywhere. Yep. But they ne- they never spread. They just burn forever in one place. Or get put basically, out. Yeah, <laughs> but basically, according to this movie, Christian people are pretty much constantly lighting the area next to their windows on fire and then putting it out. <laughs> so when they get raptured, it doesn't get put out, but it never spreads. The fire is nonsense, and we see a lot of it. We do. I, and I have a, a fan theory here, which is that uh, those fires we see throughout the movie, atheist bonfires, celebrations. <laughs> it's the only reason they wouldn't be put out. Just everyone's on All top right. of the skyscrapers, roasted that, marshmallows, having anal sex. That does make more sense. It seems like the rapture would be pretty awesome. There'd be like a short period of like, all right, it's a little crazy, like 200 million people died or whatever. But th- I feel like it'd be po- all positive after that, right? Uh, let me let me counter your point here, Heath. Name a Christian you would miss. <laughs> I toast. <laughs> all right. I tried to name a Christian real fast. All I could think of was the Pope. Wouldn't miss him. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> all right. Christian toast. Excellent. <laughs> well, the sooner we get going with the next segment, the sooner this piece of shit is out of my life. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll tell you all about the 94 minutes of drug relapse level heinous. That is. The Mark II Redemption. Hi, I'm Heath Enright. And I'm Eli Bosnick. Noah isn't here this week. And so that gives us the chance to do something we don't normally do. Beg you for money. That's right. See, Noah's always believed that a quick reminder about Patreon at the end of the show, or a joke in the middle, is a classy way to remind you that you can support us. But that's because he's old and doesn't need money anymore. He also doesn't eat food. He sure doesn't. But now that he's not here, we'd like to throw that class right the fuck in the garbage and ask you, no, beg you, to pledge as little as a dollar over at patreon.com forward slash godawful. Please. Pretty please. Pretty, pretty please. If just 10% of the people who listen to this episode pledged only a dollar, we'd have so much fucking money. So much money and we know not all of you could afford to give and to you we say gross gross indeed but if you can please give us your money we really really need your money we do we need that money you want a commercial free version of the show that's just a dollar you want more than a dozen bonus reviews of secular movies like batman v superman and star wars episode one a fucking dollar But most importantly, you'll be giving us money. And two-thirds of this podcast needs money. A lot of money. He would absolutely not let us do this if he wasn't on vacation. He sure wouldn't. Give us your money. Give it to us. Please. Money. Please. This is our only chance for like five years to ask for this. Please. Money. No if you give us enough. And we're back. And I, I hate it already just thinking about it. So <laughs> the movie starts with a, a recap of the first one. Basically last week on episode one of what we obviously wrote as a TV show originally, some <laughs> stuff happened. Can I, all right. So can I try to catch everyone up here? Oh, please do. He, right. please do. We don't, we don't want anyone feeling left out of the mark too. Wouldn't want to be lost in this plot. Indeed. Secret of the not Jews. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, Hop in, by the way, if you have anything that needs to be said. So, uh, so this guy Chad got the first microchip implant thing, giving him the superhuman power of no swipe purchasing or something. <laughs> uh, Chad gets on an airplane with the chip in his arm, headed to the G20 summit in Berlin, where the Avanti Corporation is going to reveal their new technology. At the same time, this, uh, European evil guy is hoping to take over the world, so he oh. hires Australian evil guy to steal the chip for him and, and and also hijack the entire plane for some reason. That's the best way to steal a small. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So it's a good, good plan. And then uh, while they're still on the plane, the rapture happens and all the Christian people in the world disappear into heaven and all the kids under a certain age. Meanwhile, the bad guys realize the chip is (laughs) biometric, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which is a Mm -hmm. word the movie thinks means 
alive. It does not. Yeah. So they can't just cut it out of Chad's arm because the chip will die and he'll die or something. So they call like time out on, on the hijacking and just sulk for a while. And that's when Chad and uh, the stewardess he's trying to fuck, her name's Dow. They decide to parachute out of the plane over Thailand and become post rapture fugitives. Um, that's where we leave off. Did I miss anything important from this amazing uh, plot they've set up for us? There was a fat guy. There was a fat guy last week. <laughs> there was a fat and he guy. Knew, he knew karate. There was, uh, I miss how he would have pronounced it if you asked him. <laughs> I miss fat guy so much. Oh. Let's get a fat guy mon can we put together a little fat guy montage? Like a like an unpopular kid who died Can we <laughs> in the yearbook? Just maybe we photos just, his parents took. Maybe we just talk about him for the rest of this episode. I really, yeah. really don't want to talk about this movie. Let's do it. God damn it. All right, we're gonna get in trouble. Fine. All right. So, so uh <laughs> <laughs> So they they land the parachute that that they shared, by the way. And now they're in, Ugh, now they're I hate in those couples. <laughs> and now they're in Bangkok on the run from the Avanti Corporation, also an international supervillain, and, and, and also somehow the government of, of, of somewhere or, or something. Right. And we should point out that this is the fakest looking of fake cities, <laughs> right? They, they, a cardboard cutout of a city with like a visible guy holding it would have been way <laughs> less distracting and terrible than this green screen that they <laughs> quote unquote parachute into. Yeah. And, they, they landed a field right next to a, a, a large painting of a burning city. Who knows what's <laughs> on the other side of that painting? It could have been bad, but they're on the front of it. So yeah. they're, they're, they're on the front of Detroit. So it's good. Yeah. And, uh, then they go, uh, they go get a, a car to, uh, to run away. And they, they, they're supposed to break the window of this car, but it's obvious this movie does not have the budget to break a fake window. So it's just <laughs> him looking at the car and then we hear like, <laughs> like they couldn't afford the breaking glass sound. That's how cheap it was. <laughs> they just like hit a wind chime extra hard and they were like, that'll be fine. That's fine. That'll do it. <laughs> yeah. So they find the car that says break glass in case of emergency on the car and, uh, they get it in and they start driving away. And then we get a little bit of, uh, opening credit stuff. Um, by the way, produced by Michael Scott. <laughs> <laughs> that would explain a lot if it was office Michael Scott. Yeah. This is pretty close to what Michael Scott would have made. So it makes sense. Oh yeah. The whole first scene is like Michael Scott doing improv. It's like freeze. Michael Scott and FBI gunfight just immediately. <laughs> first thing that happens. Pew, pew. Yeah. The bad guys are chasing them and the other car, he shoots at the other car and it explodes for no reason, right? He just like, he shoots at it and, and then the, uh, there is a group of bad guys like all near a barrel and like a literal fucking video game, he shoots the barrel near them and all the bad guys die. It's the best. It's like fucking golden eye. I expected him to snipe someone in the dick. <laughs> we said no odd jobs. <laughs> Our job was good. You could duck and you get under That's stuff. That's right. Yeah. Golden eye. Good times. Yeah. So, uh, also one other detail from the credits, by the way, uh, written by David A.R. White as David oh. White. Yeah. I guess they didn't like the screenplay from part one. So they got, you know, famous script doctor David A.R. White to fix it. And, uh, which would explain why so much of this movie we've seen before. <laughs> yeah. It really, really does. So, uh, yeah, all right, they, uh, explode a bunch of the bad guys. There's only a few left, so they start running away, and oh my god, they run away so bad. They, <laughs> they hold hands and they run away. Hands. They, it's so terrible. They look like a couple learning to ice skate for the first time, running away from guys with automatic weapons. It's fantastic. I wanted them to stop and have that two clingy couple, why did you let go of my hand fight? <laughs> Just like, no, it's fucking fine if you don't want to hold my hand. No, babe, I fucking love you. It's just like, we're running away and they're shooting at us, babe. No, it's fucking fine. Like, I get it. When it matters, you don't want to hold my hand. Babe, I fucking love you. Let's go to Jamba Juice and have a noisy fight in front of Eli while he tries to eat a smoothie that he thinks is healthy. Come on, babe. We'll end it with a violent makeout session that he's pretty sure includes penetration. Bet. Bet. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> all of that would have been so much better than what actually happens. That would have been delightful to watch compared to the, the movie itself. 
so they r- run away somehow from, from everybody that's left. And, uh, then there's a, a flash of light for, for no reason. I wasn't sure what was happening. And then we cut over to a voiceover of, of the news and a title card with a Bible quote. It says, uh, Revelation 13, 5, and it gives us a quote, but these people are fucking stupid. So they actually got the wrong verse. They, they give us a verse that's not Revelation 13, really? 5. Yeah. I, I looked it up. It's, they give us the verse about how there's supposed to be a literal dragon, dragon. at yeah. during, you know, post rapture, which means I'm thinking, all right, well, we're going to see a ridiculous close up of a plastic action figure at some point, or <laughs> these idiots remind us about something they obviously can't afford. And it's, it's actually the latter. Oh, I am so disappointed. It's not an actual drag. It's just the dragon giving a speech at the G20. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I just ate a bunch of people. So forgive me. <laughs> we must join together in unity. I'm a dragon. Question. Are you a dragon? I, uh, that kind of yellow journalism is not, <laughs> not appropriate right now. All right. Try- I just ate a bunch of Antifa people. <laughs> Nobody thanked me. Trying to unify the currency. That fixes things somehow. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I was thinking maybe I could sit on all of it. <laughs> no? We don't like that? All right. Just throw all ideas right. out there. Note that. Note that. Maybe we'll come back to it. All right. Note it. Pin in that. Pin in that. <laughs> Pile of gold. Pile of gold. Might, not, might do it. That's not what happens. That hilarious movie about the dragon is not what happens. Nope. None of that. None of that's that. That's what happens in our sequel to God Awful Movies the Movie, <laughs> which you will be able to fund on GoFundMe if Noah doesn't edit this <laughs> sentence out of the episode. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, again, none of the good stuff that that, that we're going to make up ever happens. Uh, instead, we see New York City, it's four hours after the rapture. And uh, I was sure, I was like, oh, New York City after the rapture, it's going to be completely normal. Just nobody, it's going to be... <laughs> It's going to be David A.R. White's idea of a typical day in New York City, just a street full of rabbis doing Jewish stuff, drinking out of red Starbucks cups and being <laughs> Jewish. But yeah. I would I would love in one of these Christian movies for it to be like uh Jerusalem and everything's on fire and they're screaming. And then it's like Salt Lake City. Everything's burning and screaming. <laughs> and dying. New York City. And someone's just like, it feels less crowded, right? <laughs> Just like not a lot like less crowded, slightly. but I have caught my train slightly faster commute today. Yeah. Like two percent nice. faster. I like it, it here. It feels nice. <laughs> All of upstate New York is on fire in just a circle around the city. <laughs> I heard we're doing some uh, environmental legislation today. Cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Passed unanimously again. Weird. Huh? Today's a good day. This is fun. <laughs> I like today. <laughs> Yes. So, uh, we see New York and then we see, uh, evil European guy, uh, Philip Turk and, uh, he's watching his, uh, evil guy wall of TVs. Bad guys will not change channels. They have to have a wall of TVs. And I want to point out that if there was a guy named Philip Turk with a Y, by the way, Philip with yeah, a Y, yep. Turk, who was the Antichrist, the worst thing about him would be being named Philip with a Y. Still, still, if he was the Antichrist. <laughs> Phil, I'd be like, ugh, fine, you're the newborn son here to conquer God's kingdom. But with a Y, ugh. Gross. What, did your parents conceive you at Bonnaroo? <laughs> Gross. Yeah, so uh we learn from the news here that uh the Avanti Corporation, who invented the, the chip thing, they're shut down now because their CEO, that's Eric Roberts from the first movie, he's missing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, then, uh, somebody comes into, to Philip Turk's office and they say, we're evacuating the building because of the, the rapture or whatever. So he gets in the elevator with some lady he works with and they get into the dumbest fight about the word tragic. It's <laughs> so sloppy. It's, he's supposed to be threatening her, right? She goes, he's like, she's like, Oh, I see our competition has had a tragic downfall right and he's like no tragic is what i'll do to you if i if there ever were a time i'll tell you what, what oh, fuck tragic is when and you want the bodyguard in the back to be like you want to take that again guys we got, we got this elevator all afternoon you don't have to stumble over a sentence like a like a 19 year old trying to propose over celebrate at prom <laughs> yeah. just so th- th- their argument about tragic is actually just a horribly written gimmick to get 20 minutes of exposition in there. Stumbly, awful exposition. And uh 
They get out of the elevator. They walk into the parking garage. And all of a sudden, two guys with guns try to mug Mr. Turk and the crew and take the car. <laughs> right, but he uses his antichrist powers to give them a pep talk? <laughs> yeah, he starts doing, like, Chris Angel, the black magic mentalist. <laughs> like, you're uncertain. You have recurring nightmares about a snake. It often becomes sexual. Was Prague the city you were thinking of? Great, now shoot each other. And they, like, tricks them, and they, they shoot each other. Right, he's like... Are you really mad at me or are you mad at him? They instantly get in a gunfight and both die. It's like watching YouTubers fight. It's phenomenal. It's just like, oh, I heard he said you were fat. And the takedown videos begin. Mm, back to audio podcasting. <laughs> yes. And literally, they're riding. There's a scene right after this where the he and the lady are riding in the car, like in awkward silence. Yep. And I wanted her to be like, so that's nice that that worked out. The whole talking. <laughs> Them into shooting each other thing. Cool. That was good. Cool. That was useful to our plot. <laughs> so You hungry yet? <laughs> I could eat, but I'm not hungry. Oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> you let me know when you're well, hungry. We're on the way to the airport. I feel like there's going to be stuff at the airport. We can yeah, get, we we can can get airport, airport stuff. Uh, I just hate I like to be food. early. I like to be early. Me too. Me too. And I'm the Antichrist, so I just go, I'm TSA pre-check. Just go right through because I'm the Antichrist. We tried to get LaGuardia. We're going to JFK. It's going to be extra traffic. Oof. Yeah. Probably better. All right. There. All right. We'll eat at the airport. Good. Sure. Good talk. Yeah, so that, <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens. They, they go to the airport and, uh, we see JFK airport on fire, but. Yep. Planes are taking off no problem anyway. No problem. I, <laughs> planes can't take off if it fucking rains, but apparently if you're the Antichrist, you just take off through a fucking hoop of fire. That's what they're doing with all the <laughs> Ringling Bros stuff now that it's closed down. <laughs> they just take off the Antichrist's plane through it. <laughs> yep. All right, so they, they take off, and then we cut over to Bangkok 10 hours later, and Chad and Dow are like, all right, well, we got to get out of here. And he's like, yeah, we can't stay in... One place for too long because of the tracker. So he, apparently he thinks the GPS tracker in his arm is fooled by moving. Yeah. It would not be a great GPS tracker for the record if every time you moved, it was like, fuck, we got to wait for him to hold still again. It's like a, like a tile thing. We got to hope someone with Bluetooth walks by and then <laughs> someone has located your human slave. Oh, nice. <laughs> Send anonymous. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. And so, uh, so they start, uh, r running some more and, uh, they're, they're doing at this point a voiceover for themselves <laughs> while they look for a car to steal. Like they couldn't just be taught, like, like they tried to do a walk and talk and the actors were like, no, 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 no. You get one or the <laughs> other. We are idiots one <laughs> at a time. We searched everywhere for a car to. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so then we uh we cut over to Mr. Turk again and he's arriving in Berlin for the G20 summit and he calls uh Joe Pike, that's the name of the evil Australian guy that he hired to steal the chip from Chad. Mhm. Mm and they basically have like a a little threatening back and forth thing and what what I love about this movie is the guy who plays uh Mr. Pike He's a real actor. He was in The Expendables. He's been in action movies. I don't know how he ended up in this. Just like a bad weekend. And his cousin was like, come on, y'all love acting. And he was like, all right, fine. Uh, so all of his lines are that he doesn't believe in this movie. Because he's like, tell me, Mr. Pike, do you believe in God? And he's like, I believe in money. And I like to think that that's about this movie. He's just like, no, I just wanted, come on, man, sag after. I needed the health insurance for a year. <laughs> Yeah. So uh the evil European guy's on the phone with, with Joe Pike and he's talking about uh you know how he has to get him the chip. He says he threatens him, he says, if Avanti gets the chip before me, you don't get paid. And Joe Pike is like, Is that a threat? And the evil European guy, Philip Turk's like, I don't bode well with such trivial things as threats. And that's a nonsense sentence that makes no sense because David A.R. White is borderline illiterate. Yeah. I will not abide a dance party known as up, down, all the round. Per se, Ibid. Nope. None of that. None of that. In conjunction. <laughs> yeah. Is the scene over? <laughs> it should have been. But How uh, many words now? <laughs> 
instead of being over, they get into this really weird, like philosophical conversation we, where they're talking about like, do you think God gave us each a purpose? Let's have a long talk. We're bad guys. <laughs> He's just twirling the spirally cord of the phone around his finger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, you hang up. <laughs> do you maybe, think there's a heaven? Okay. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we just focus on our evil plot for now. Great. Cool. So, <laughs> so uh, what's your favorite movie? <laughs> You're a weird employer. Can I say that? This is weird. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they, they, they finish up their phone call and, uh, Chad and Dow are driving and listening to the, the rapture news on the radio. Yeah. One of the things we hear is that Vatican City and the U.S. Bible Belt were hit really hard everywhere else. <laughs> Again, pretty much the same. New York City, Jewish. <laughs> Eli Bosnick, you're Jew. Like, it might as well say <laughs> to- that. <laughs> totally fine. Just saying. Totally fine. <laughs> but you wait. You wait till movie three, which we're not going to make. That's that's when they'll know. <laughs> and we should explain. Chad's plan now is that he wants to go to his brother's old house. His brother had a house in Thailand, and he thinks his parents are there because they go there <laughs> on the yeah. anniversary of the day he died. Yeah, the d- the dead brother... Has a house that, that he died and now the parents, like, do, do they just bother the new owners to like, <laughs> like, hey, you, you don't, you don't know us. Can we have weepy sex in your bedroom for a little bit? And that turned into like an annual thing now that they do. Yeah. I get it. You know how it's like you start getting together with your buddies just before Thanksgiving and then it becomes a yearly thing, but then you don't really want to hang out with them anymore and it gets sadder <laughs> and sadder. It's like that. It's like the awkward TGI Fridays, the fifth year in a row with people you don't like anymore, but with your dead child is what I'm saying. That's what, that's what this <laughs> tradition is like. And Dow, by the way, totally unsubtly is just like, well, you know, your parents might have been stolen and sent to heaven. So. Consider <laughs> this is this is a dumb dumb thing for us to do. They were probably going to look for us there, also, in addition to them not being there. Probably, <laughs> yeah. He doesn't care, so that's where they're going. And now we cut over to Joe Pike beating up Eric Roberts, who he <laughs> has in captivity in a cage at their warehousey lair thing. And apparently, they're not on the same side what? anymore. What? Wait, yeah, wasn't ER on their team at the end of the last one? Did- I thought so. Wasn't that a reveal? I think the movie got confused by its own plot. I have no idea what's happening right now. Also, uh, just weird side note. I feel like punching is a bad way to torture. Because aren't you going to just like <laughs> eh, knock him out? Like, I feel like there's just more punching in store, right? Like, it's not. You're just like, I'll continue the punching. A dead leg. Tell me whatever. <laughs> yeah. Indian burn. Indian <laughs> burn. Where's the microchip? <laughs> he starts spitting into his mouth like an older brother. That that would be better than punching. So, uh, so yeah, he's beating up Eric Roberts. Not sure why. Really nothing happens for a reason as far as I can tell. Then a uh, computer nerd shows up with some henchmen that he was told to gather. <laughs> and we get the, they get their own intro screens. These characters, by the way, don't bother caring about them at all because all of them will have the exact same thing. They will all walk into a room that Chad is in. Chad will do a lazy white guy, fat guy karate chop near their arm. And this obvious trained stuntman who wanted a break in movies will throw himself in like a sideways flip into a set of stairs. And will not be in the movie anymore. But this is this is where we meet them. There's Jackson Draka, aka the Stalker. The Stalker. Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh by the way, we we get like a little baseball card shot of like their profile and their stats and whatever. So that's how we know their nickname. And also, this guy, the Stalker, was dishonorably discharged for espionage and sexual assault. So. Like, both. He spied and raped at the same time, and they, <laughs> they discharged him from the U.S. Army. Dude, what did you do to this file? Spy raped it. <laughs> oh! Spy raped it. You gave it to the Russians, and you fucked it? This what is did the we worst. say? What did we say? You're the <laughs> second worst next to Snowden. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we've got him. We've got Bloody Barry. Yep. Uh, and then the last guy... Little two on the nose, Lucifer. <laughs> and his, his real name's Damien T. 
Cash, a.k.a. Lucifer. Yeah, very, very subtle. David A.R. White, excellent writer. So the, <laughs> Joe Pike goes up to these three uh, new henchmen and he offers them five million euro to to find Chad, which <laughs> seems excessive. Five million yeah. to, to do this one thing. And also seems like a bad idea. He's like, all right, one, two, three, go. And race, like, like <laughs> to, to go find Chad. That, yeah, that doesn't seem like the best way to get your people to work well together. Isn't their first <laughs> option then going to be like, oh, fuck, Steve caught him. I got to I gotta <laughs> kill Steve now and then get the guy. This is a whole thing. <laughs> one of them just dive stabs another one, throws a bookcase down, <laughs> pushes the guy and runs away. Yeah. And there's there's this incredible moment at the very end of the scene. He goes, any questions? Then what are you still doing here? And that's just a movie trope. But in a movie trope, he goes, any questions? And there's a pause. And then he goes, then what are you still doing here? And everyone scrambles out of the way. But these characters are all holding still just staring at him. So all of the characters are just like, I mean, it's been like a second. Like, did you, you wanted me to like explode out of the room the moment you were done? Right. What if I had a question? I don't, you see, maybe I still do feel. <laughs> It's just this perfect, awkward moment at the end of the scene. It's fantastic. All right, so the bad guys run out to do their thing. And uh, then uh, we cut over to uh, locking Eric Roberts in uh, a cage in uh, the room right next to their, like, evil guy computer room where they say all their plans out loud so Eric Roberts can hear them and, like, taunt them throughout the movie. That's his entire role, as far as I can tell, is to just be like, oh, is that what you're going to do? <laughs> I could come up with something if i wanted to but i won't oh yeah the rest of this movie will just be eric roberts being a psychic and announcing where the rest of the movie takes place just yep. like oh well if i wanted to create conflict in my sloppily written movie i would know that his brother had a best friend who always loved that chinese place down the street and that waitress has a safe house <laughs> yep i know that eric roberts <laughs> Yep. There should be conflict there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh then uh from there we see uh one of the three henchmen, the uh spy rapist one, and uh he has apparently just teleported to the random building <laughs> where Chad and Dow found that car most recently. And, yeah, and he's talking to the guy that saw them steal it. How how in any way possible <laughs> would he have known that area where they were any to of talk that. to that, any of that, no reason. Yeah. Okay. None of this makes sense, right? It's not like I had no idea what was happening. You also agree that none of this makes sense. None of it. Okay. None. Zero. <laughs> All right. Excellent. So, uh, we see the, the, the henchman guy get a beat on them somehow. Then we're back to watching people drive again. <laughs> And like, if we're going to, we watch a lot of driving, at least give us a driving game. If we're going to watch this in real time, <laughs> like, all right, is it a, is it a person, place or thing, thing, terrible CGI fire. Yes. <laughs> terrible CGI fire. All right. I'm thinking of an antichrist. <laughs> I'm going on Car a picnic, games. going on a picnic. <laughs> My little sister's a sex slave. <laughs> yeah. Right. Cause that is what happens is these two characters seem bored and she's like, um, I was thinking I could introduce a weird <laughs> subplot to the movie yeah. that will never matter except for this movie was 60 minutes and we needed 90. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So we learned that Dow had a, a little sister named Mali. Uh, mom died giving birth to Mali and, uh, then, uh, Dow's dad started drinking and gambling. And he gambled away the little sister to a gang. He gambled away the little sister. He's like, what's that image? How does that, how does that look like? He's at a casino and he's, he just like throws her on the roulette table. Like, all right, cash and people play. Like, no, no, no. Stand on top of that other girl. Me and her dad both big on green on top. Just get on the same. Square. Get on her shoulders. Get there on her shoulders. shoulders. Still just, know what she means. Just chicken fighting a girl on red. <laughs> That's not a racist thing. That's a pool game. Just so you know. people, I can already hear people being mad, but it's just a pool game. All right, relax. I'm sorry you didn't have a pool growing up, but it's a fun, fun activity that we rich people did while you 
sprayed each other with a hose that was also your drinking water or whatever you all did. But <laughs> it's not. And you're racist for thinking chicken and Asian people was related. That that was yeah. racist of you guys. Double. Patreon.com slash god awful. Apology accepted. <laughs> yes. So uh the uh the triad gang, by the way, is who we're talking about. The triads apparently take Mali to be a prostitute because of this gambling. And Chad's listening to this story. He's driving and he you you see his face. He literally almost falls asleep at the wheel during her tragic <laughs> story of her sister becoming a prostitute slave. Uh yes, I honestly I wanted him to be like, oh, I'm so sorry, I wasn't listening. What? You have a sister? We should go visit her. <laughs> yeah. That seems really nice. I wanted Molly to turn out to hit Chad's brother with the car, and then the whole movie <laughs> is full circle, but no. No, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they uh, keep driving for like way too long and uh then they're, they're finally arriving somewhere and uh, it was actually super convenient because they pull up right next to a news crew explaining more stuff about this movie which works in, in english no less <laughs> in english, which is really exactly. useful that the bangkok news is in english <laughs> <laughs> yeah and they're telling us that uh the rapture took lots of people uh regardless of race gender or class. Now, just real quick, if the rapture was done by race, who do you think God brings to heaven first? Thank you. Okay, let's get, let's into, get it. into it. Obviously, Good. Arabs. Arabs right? first. They're definitely the most religious, right? Okay, but I mean like best people. Oh, like the you're best. talking about who he wants to hang like out you, with? Like, who no, you, you, like eugenically, like who do you want DNA-wise uh, in the pool okay, in who heaven? Who the best races Who's the, who is the best race all is right what I'm you asking. flipped it around on me because well here's the thing god loves the jews but you don't want jews mm -hmm. hanging around right there's a, yeah there's a new covenant though i don't know if the jews have it anymore did you have you not read so the mormons he brings the mormons oh, first okay yeah that's a, yeah that makes sense so, i don't know so white people we're saying white people white yeah white okay got it got it cool <laughs> so, settled <laughs> settled <laughs> So the movie, no, and and this is this age of accountability thing, right? Where they're trying to apologize because it's a rapture movie. Got lots of sad people just like holding up baby blankets, but like he don't, they don't have the age that he's just like, <laughs> exactly. oh, the babies and, and kids of a certain age. They're gone. Like they haven't figured out enough. They couldn't check. <laughs> this is like everybody's gone. Be like, how? What's what's the youngest kid that you have? Got it. Okay. <laughs> Who's got a six-year-old? All nope. right, seven. All right. Who's got Who's got the oldest penny? Come right. on, let's make this fun. <laughs> Whose six-year-old has the oldest penny? <laughs> also, I, I have a question. Um, what if you have Benjamin Button disease? How does the age of accountability I, thing? Work? I was going to say, what about super smart babies? Ooh, what about those? Yeah, what if you get like a baby <laughs> Andrew Torres? Right. He was and, He was at Harvard when he was like eight. Going to law yeah. school. So that was accountable. I feel like that's accountable. Also, what about people who have learning disabilities? Like, I, oh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Let's, let's, let's dig into it. All right. And the movie's bringing it up. Rate your learning disabilities in order of superiority. Autism. Right? Okay. That's, that's my, the best. That's obviously, the best one. Because they can computer and piano. Right. And they're good at roulette. ADD. Mm -hmm. Those ones are fun. Yeah. Yeah. And you get, right? you get the Adderall. So right. that's good. Depressives. That's a fun drug. Okay, we're gonna say depressive third. Third. Okay, Honest. bronze, bronze metal depressives. Be happy. Be happy. <laughs> bronze metal guys. For once. Just be satisfied. <laughs> no, the problem, but here's the thing that brings up the question of, cause if you're doing the baby thing right and you have someone with a disability who has a mind of a, of a child, but then you have a super smart baby, do they go to heaven at the same time or do they, is the person with the learning disability, how disabled can your learning be before you don't get, to, before you go to heaven? You guys need to write a chapter on this to make, make it Figure all clear. It out. Let us know how disabled you think you should be to go to heaven. Or if you'd like us to write the chapter, next goal, maybe we write a, the new chapter of the Bible and you guys Absolutely. put it in. Absolutely. Write a new Bible. We'll Patreon.com forward slash new Bible. <laughs> And also, this scene ends in the weirdest way. Dow ends this scene when she, when after he explains the like age of thing, she just goes, man, I wish my sister was dead. Like, wouldn't that be nice? I hope she's Christian and dead and not alive now. <laughs> yep. 
they get that wrong later. They get the, the, so apparently they understand that concept here, but they do not understand it later. It's, it's very confusing. Um, so, so from there, we cut over to the G20 summit in Berlin where, uh, we see a shot of the city. Apparently a laser vulture recently attacked Berlin. And, uh, then we zoom in on the multinational council. <laughs> which, and you can tell it's multinational because everyone has a different accent. There's an Arab and an African guy, which is movie for UN. <laughs> exactly. So uh they're all being multinational in a tiny little room. The, there's six of them. There are six humans. Six people in there. Seven six people nations in there. represented. And uh the evil European guy walks in. Can we just say he's the Antichrist, right? Yeah, he's the Antichrist. Okay, so evil European guy, Antichrist, walks into this tiny room, tells everybody to sit down and shut up, and uh, starts giving a speech about, you know, what they're going to do to take over the world or whatever. It's amazing. And I am so happy with how they chose to represent. Because, again, it is six people in the room. And I would love to just sit David White down and be like, all right, man, so uh, what nation is the African-American guy from? And he'd be like, Af for toast. A Af Africa. <laughs> uh huh. And the Arab guy? A Arabia. Arabs in Uh huh. And the lady? Just Germany. Germany. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he gives this like pep talk about ever since I was a child, I wanted to be the Antichrist. I mean, peace or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to see uh Antichrist camp, just a bunch of little kids tattooing foreheads, playing with guillotines, <laughs> doing Antichrist stuff. Kayaking. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, kayaking. all camps have kayaking. <laughs> also, this is where he unveils the, the saving grace of this movie. Because like we've said, this is a terrible, boring movie, and I hated watching it. But this is where he reveals his plan, which is the meta-analysis recording chip. <laughs> Spells Mark wrong. The Mars. <laughs> the Mars. <laughs> the Mars. Also, uh, not what those words meta analysis recording is not. They don't have the, <laughs> nope. Nope. Like, I want so badly for someone to get it installed and they're just like, Oh shit. That's, ah, now I know all of Joseph Campbell's hero of a thousand faces. <laughs> that's a, that's a weird use for a chip. I mean, I like it. Don't get me wrong. It really helps me understand literature, especially through the, Jungian lens. I just feel like this is a weird <laughs> way to use a chip. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he reveals his, uh, Mars plan. And then we cut back to, uh, the evil guy warehouse where the computer nerd, uh, Warren is talking to Joe Pike about how they, they found Chad's parachute. Right. And, and he says that he's probably within a 50 mile radius. <laughs> so. Wait, 50 mile, either the tracker's working or not. <laughs> why would it, why would there be like a, a vague GPS setting that they would have? Like, give me within 50 miles. That's what it's set to right now. <laughs> yeah. Is it set to, is it set to a city? Yeah. Great. Give me, give me a city's worth, <laughs> multiple cities worth of locations and I'll, I'll figure out the rest. <laughs> And then uh, this is where Eric Roberts hops in for his first, like, I'm in earshot, so I'm in this movie, too. Right. <laughs> he decides he's going to help out Warren or, like, lure him in, at least, to try to help him out. Yeah, he says, I can help you big time. And I just wrote in my notes, so many women have heard Eric Roberts say that. And so many times he's been lying. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now Chad and Dow arrive at the dead brother's house. And he, he, they go in and he goes, well, keep the lights off so nobody knows we're here. And then in the next scene, he is walking through the house with a fully lit candelabra <laughs> for maximum silliness. <laughs> you might as well light up like the torch from Temple of Doom. Here, <laughs> let's be sneaky and walk around with these. And so he walk. they walk up the stairs to, I guess, a bedroom. He knocks. Chad knocks on it. He's like, Dad? <laughs> Dad? <laughs> so, yeah, the, the parents definitely keep this giant empty house so they can visit the death shrine of their dead son once a year. That's what's happening. Yep. That's confirmed. And sure enough, we find mom and dad's clothes. <laughs> and I yeah. just want to point out, all of our notes are predictive at this point. All of our notes are just like, oh no, they always pray this way. 
Oh no, our parents are gone. Oh. oh, I really don't like this genre of movies we've chosen for this <laughs> podcast. Yeah, <laughs> so they they find dead parents' clothes or raptured parents' clothes. But I really wanted the parents at this point to just jump out from a closet and be like, "Ah, I <laughs> got you. We put the clothes in a file to fuck with you." Yeah, naked. We're naked. yeah, we do. We were doing butt stuff. We didn't get raptured. You knew that. Obviously, Woo! look at that <laughs> a little helicopter for you, son. Oh, try not to get hypnotized. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> you got to picture an old man swinging his penis in a circle for that joke to work. I'm doing it, but it's an audio medium. I'm doing so gotta, it too. Picture both of us. In, let's both do it. Ready? Ooh, all right. ooh, are you going? Ooh, wait. Are you going ooh, clockwise or counter? Always clockwise. Always clockwise. Never, stupid. No, stupid question. We talked about yeah. it. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, oh. Uh, 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 ow. Uh, okay. Ow. <laughs> Fucking those right. pop filters are getting. Pop, it's <laughs> tricky. It's tricky. Yeah. So uh <laughs> he finds out his parents are raptured, and now he's sad, which doesn't make sense. Like I was saying before, like, yeah. like she seemed to get that. Like, oh, I hope my sister's gone, but he's just like, oh, my parents are in heaven. I'm sad. I don't get it's, it. It's really hope they were stuck on Earth with the Antichrist and the demons, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh they're. Sad at the weird dead guy shrine house. And, uh, then we cut back to, uh, the warehouse computer lair with Warren and, uh, Eric Roberts is still tied up in the next room. And, uh, this is where, this is where Eric Roberts really gets into it. He basically starts doing like Hannibal Lecter with Clarice now and yeah. like, like come closer, Warren. You use Evian skin cream and sometimes you wear Lair du Temps, but not today. It's really creepy. It's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, and he's, he basically says, uh, he had a brother. He's probably at his brother's house. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he's like, oh, all right. Cool. That's, that's a weirdly specific thing for you to know. And then, and then the, this is again in exchange for a cup of coffee and a cigarette. And he goes, black with one sugar and no <laughs> menthols. And I guarantee you they had to cut Eric Roberts saying, I'm not a black guy after no <laughs> menthols. Seven shots in a row before they just like cut. No, it's fine. <laughs> what? It'll be funny. True. <laughs> yes. So, uh, now, uh, Eric Roberts gave him a little bit of information to work with and, uh, and, uh, Warren decides to use their dedicated satellite that they own apparently <laughs> to, to look for the, the dead brother's house. Yeah. For Google maps. And it, it appears to be tracing the house. It's like, beep, 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 beep. I wanted him to be like, keep the house on the phone. Oh, <laughs> two bedrooms, you said. <laughs> it is this. And he, he turns to him. He goes, this could take hours. What? Why? How could it possibly take hours? Either there's a house <laughs> under that name or there's not. And what is the satellite even doing? Like what? It's looking for a plaque that says, Chad's dead brother used to live here and it's just like zooming across all of Thailand. I don't get how that makes any sense. Also, um, they say the brother, the dead brother might have used an alias. We're cross checking now. So that's just nonsense. A, not what cross check means. You need like two lists of things to cross check one against yep. the other, but more importantly, if you don't know the alias, you're just looking for. Jeremy Turner, the brother's <laughs> actual name, plus all other names. That's, yeah, that's nothing. That's what they're cross checking against. <laughs> Is nothing. there anyone who was named Jeremy Turner who was or also named literally anything, anything else? else? <laughs> that's cross. That's why it's going to take two hours to check. That's why every other name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and a satellite is involved somehow. Yeah. <laughs> so they do more satellite stuff that makes no sense and then we cut back to the dead brother's house and uh chad's waking up from the, the couch where he slept and continued to not fuck the hot asian stewardess that he's trying to fuck yeah it's very very confusing their relationship because sometimes it's sexual but now in this movie it feels like they're buddies or maybe they're just like now they're both christians so they don't fuck it was very confusing i was very upset by it <laughs> yeah so uh he wakes up he he wakes her up and he turns on the the TV so that they keep the cable TV service going at this dead brother's house. Yep. And uh in Bangkok <laughs> in Bangkok which gets all English channels by the way. It gets all English channels. Obviously. Obviously. And uh so now we're watching uh Philip Turk the Antichrist 
and uh, he's trying to stop the collapse of the world economy. And Chad and Dow are like, "Oh, that's our Mark. Let's get him. He's trying to. That's, that's the bad guy trying to fix the world." <laughs> And again, I know we've pointed this out before when we've watched these movies, but like that does mean if there's ever a global economic collapse and someone tries to fix it, some asshole who watched these movies will be like, that's the motherfucker right there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. (laughs) I've seen like seven movies about this. (laughs) We have to like break into his lair with parkour and kill him. (laughs) Oh. Just someone trying to do a cartwheel into Obama's home. Just, <laughs> yeah. Oh God, I sprained my side. <laughs> oh, pray me better. Pray me better. Gather round, brothers. And sisters. <laughs> I made a poopsicle. All right. So we want to make Leap Three. They're taking way too long. And yeah. if you give us enough money, we will just make Leap Three instead. Absolutely. Got it. We've got a lot of good, good new ideas, good new goals. Got a lot today. of ideas. See, when he's not here to be negative and bring us down, we rate the races. We rank stuff that's offensive. We talk about who God wants to marginalize groups. Get we listed in orders. The tastes of black people. <laughs> Calling that back so you can't cut it from the episode. <laughs> All right, so. uh Moving on, um, <laughs> Chad and Dow decide. All right, we gotta keep moving because again, you know, GPS can't track motion. Um, so Chad's like, and it's, it's this weird moment. Chad's like, all right, so we're going to leave, but, uh, you look ugly. Maybe do your hair, put on some makeup and then we yeah. go. <laughs> it's like, you want to, you want to take a shower or something or you want to keep smelling like that all day? <laughs> and she's like, oh, sorry. I didn't, I just, you know, with the antichrist. And he's like, yeah, no, little, little self care. It's not the worst thing in the world. <laughs> The world's over, but we're still here. You know what I'm saying? Just deodorant. <laughs> find a speed stick. Dow. Yeah, so that was weirdly negative and misogynist. And uh, we also find out here that uh, the bad guys at the computer lair found a, a utility bill with the dead brother's name. The address is on the east side of Bangkok. So they, they have an idea where this house is. Um, again, why use satellites for any of this? No idea. Unclear. Unclear. He likes using the the enhance button. Don't be a dick. I don't know. It it doesn't make any sense. Then he sends the uh, henchman, or at least one of them, the closest henchman's on the way to the house now. So is Joe Pike. He's like 20 minutes away. And Dow, now we get Dow's coming to God moment, right? She's, she like looks at the Bible and then she realizes it's the rapture and she has some flashbacks and Ugh. she's reading the Bible and she's dressed more modestly all of a sudden because she's a Christian now. God, can we dial back the flashbacks in these movies? They're so ridiculous and too long. Like, we might as well watch Dow just sit on a couch and watch the entire first movie while we watch <laughs> her watch, like, watch her sign up for Pure Flicks and then <laughs> her fucking router goes down and we watch her unplug it for 10 seconds and... <laughs> Watch the lights turn back on yellow to green. Still not work. All right. And she calls customer service and there's a long <laughs> menu. I want to talk to a human, please. Oh my God. No. It, oh, it's one of those ones that won't let you press zero. God damn it. Just there, zero, zero, zero. That zero. needs to be a law. <laughs> you have to offer zero human being at your goddamn zero, menu. No matter what happens, From the beginning. I want to talk to zero. I'm not an old woman. I don't want, I never want to check my balance ever. <laughs> Ever. You can get that off all the menus. <laughs> <laughs> so Dow has like fucking 25 minutes of flashbacks and she finally realizes uh, that this might actually be the rapture. She wasn't convinced until now somehow. Like, yeah, I, I don't get this. Like, why? Who's doubting? Like, if 200 million Christian people plus all the kids in the world vanish, like, we're not doing scathing atheist about rapture pareidolia. Like, what the fuck? We, we know, it's we're obviously rapture. We're all convinced right away. Yeah. Right away we're convinced. <laughs> yeah. And I have eight movies to guide me through what to do next. I'm actually, I'm the guy to find. I am the zombie apocalypse guy who knows everything about zombies for the rapture when the time comes. It's the only apocalypse I will be useful during. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so... She she's Christian now. I guess she converts right there after her little flashback thing and immediately asks for a favor from God. <laughs> immediately. She's like, exactly. Hey, God, I know we just met like 
fucking two minutes ago during my weird flash. Can, can you help me move? Can you? <laughs> I have a collection of pull-out couches. I'm, will you come? It's going to be a thing. I have a six-floor walk-up, and I just feel like this brunch <laughs> is really fun. God's just like, ooh, I would love to, but my... Uh... I I'll get you some pizzas. A, I'll get pizzas yeah. for everybody. No, I, uh, I can afford pizza Beer? all the time. Oh, okay. I can afford that too. All right. Uh, can we, are we not? This is, <laughs> this is an awkward moment now. Oh, you know, you're really a friend of Chad's. Uh, <laughs> is Chad going to be there? No, he's busy. Oh, <laughs> that's weird then for me to, See you alone. <laughs> I've made all the friends I want to make. I'm a grown up. <laughs> I'm sorry, my parachute is opening. I have to take <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> right, so now the bad guys show up at the house. Yep. Uh, and it's weird because the brother has a safe with a notebook and money behind a false wall. Yeah, it's, it's already a safe. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, again, the brother wasn't like a ninja spy. For some reason, the brother just like has a safe with like notebooks and cash and passports and shit. Like, I don't know what kind of Christian that guy was supposed to be. Anyways, very, very strange. I guess his brother was Jason Bourne again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But, but the bad guys are sneaking towards the house and this is my favorite moment in the movie. Dow comes downstairs in her new modest clothes and Chad, and Chad says to her, you look nice in my mom's clothes. Really pretty. Yeah. The creepiest thing anyone's ever said in the universe. It's gross. Oh, I thought he, I thought he was going to be like, all right, so just wait right here. And then he, Goes upstairs, comes back dressed in old man clothes, <laughs> Cosby sweater. Right. He's got a cane. Let's do this thing. We're going to do some serious, serious role playing now. Let's get <laughs> weird. <laughs> and, and Dow's response, by the way, is she goes, you think she'd mind? And I wanted to be like, nah, she'd be soaking fucking wet. Trust me, Dow. This is, <laughs> this is working on all levels for everybody. <laughs> But this is when the bad guys break in, the proximity alarm goes off, and and this is how they fool the stalker, all right? They turn on the upstairs TV, <laughs> she <laughs> lies on the bed, and he hides behind the door. Why? Why does she have to be there? Like, okay, you... Uh, you masturbate on the bed, I'll hide behind the door. Well, can I just lay here, or just not be involved fine, at all? fine. Can't you just, be weird. just you do the door thing? No. I'll tell no. you what, you look like you're starting to hide under the bed and I'll hide in the ceiling <laughs> and then you put on this chicken costume. It's the stupid, but it works. The bad guy's like, ah, perfect, lying on the bed. And then he like, again, fat guy karate chop, like, eh. And nah. the guy's like, all right, I'm out of the movie now. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. And he is. Yep. He's out. So uh <laughs> they knocked out the henchman. And they leave the house, and uh, now they're arriving at a, a a factory for for no reason. I have no idea why they end up in this airplane hangar. Yeah, well, airplane hangar. It's not. I'm pretty sure it's just the other side of that warehouse set that they that they had for the day, so they used it. I don't know. And this is how terribly this movie is written. He then starts talking about how oh, I've got all the. This is all my father's stuff. So what happened is now it was the brother's house, but the father kept his secret collection of passports and photos and incriminating information about the Avanti Corporation in the dead brother's house, which we've already <laughs> learned they only go to once a year to feel close to his ghost on the anniversary of his death. Yep. Because... This is this movie's so badly written that, that what he's about to look through is he finds a bunch of pictures and stuff and he's like, "Oh, my dad was tracking down Avanti, right? I'll save you 90 minutes of that shit." But like <laughs> the dad was tracking down Avanti because the only way the writer of this movie, which turns out to be David R. White and that makes me so happy, <laughs> could think of to introduce Avanti back into the plot was to be like, "Oh, what a coincidence." My dad was tracking the company I was a security guard for when I got accidentally injected with a chip. 
<laughs> and became central to their plan. Yep. Huh. This is, this is what's happening. <laughs> this is what's happening. So yeah, he's got the pictures of like Asian women and there's old, there's like old versions of the arm chips in there. And that's, yeah. that's the plot. And- Darling, if you're listening to this after I'm gone, anybody, if you're listening to this after I'm gone, the pictures of Asian women you found on my computer, I too am investigating the Avanti <laughs> Corporation. So I'm glad that's the assumption being made. That's very important. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they're they're trying to figure out what's happening. They're so slow figuring out this plot. It's ridiculous. So Dow is like, okay, well, you know, I know it looks kind of weird, but whatever your dad was doing, it had to be good because he got raptured and only good people would get raptured by God. And Chad's like, okay, but, but you're good and you're still here. And so this is all just to be like, well, I guess we can all agree that doing good works isn't enough. <laughs> uh, it's the sloppiest way to introduce this idea. They just pass a chalkboard with that written on it. Huh? Man cannot live through good deeds alone. I wonder what that is. All right. Now you read it, too. Uh, And he explains biometric again in this scene. Incorrectly. Uh, Biometric does not mean alive. It Uh, it does not mean the robot lives on my blood. Also (laughs) also doesn't mean robot that lives on your blood. Nope. (laughs) Nope. It means statistical analysis of biological data. Nothing. I gotta admit though, close. I am mad about this because, uh, robot that lives on your blood, robot vampire is my teen novel and I thought it was <laughs> gonna be the next Twilight, but <laughs> this movie obviously stole it so I can't write robot vampire. Unbelievable. Sexy teenage robot vampire was gonna be called and it was gonna be amazing. Ooh. But whatever. What if we do like a musical and switch Ooh. it around slightly? I don't want to drink your go. blood, <laughs> but your bolts make me do it. <laughs> And there you have it. Little taste for everybody. Get Little excited. Little taste. Patreon.com forward slash god awful. <laughs> he cuts a lot of those out and you're really experiencing them here in this show. How often I ask you for money. Okay. I feel like we're overlapping a little bit with the third act of hats off to Botswana now, but oh, we'll, that's right. Cause should, there is a robot vampire. Cause we should write, or we should write around it. We'll figure it out. We'll figure Blood's it out. Bloods off to Botswana. Bloods off to Botswana. Mm, felt like a race thing just now. <laughs> Where did we rank them? I forget. We'll, we'll talk about it later. Talk about it later. <laughs> All right, so, uh, now, uh, we go back to the warehouse with Joe Pike, his computer lair, and, uh, he's yelling at Warren, the tech nerd, uh, uh, about whatever they can't find Chad fast enough. Right. And, uh, by the way, small detail, Warren's wearing a Livestrong bracelet, which, it's which so is distracting. weird. It's distracting. It's very distracting. He also has a Pokeball on his <laughs> lair desk. Another yeah, weird little thing. He's supposed to be like a nerd, but like this actor didn't know how to play nerd. So they just like covered him from with a month's worth of loot crate stuff. And they were like, there, you're a nerd there. (laughs) Got him. (laughs) Great. So yeah, he's mad. Basically, Pike is mad at Warren that he isn't magically finding out what's going on. Yep. And meanwhile, in this scene, we cut over to Chad and Dow and among the papers, he has found the phone number of the doctor who worked on the Avanti research program. Not the doctor who injected him, a different doctor that his dad knew, Dr. S. Right. 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 And he texts this guy and instantly gets a text back. He gets a text back faster than it would be physically possible to text someone back. <laughs> right. He's like, hey, are you... My dad's friend sent, and then instantly like, but, oh yeah, look, he's, he's given me the first half of War and Peace here on this phone. It's weird. <laughs> he must have already been typing. He might as well appear in a cloud of smoke, just like poof, meet me at Pow Square at noon. Poof goes away. Yeah. It's <laughs> so fast. And, uh, this is also where we learn that, um, Mali, uh, Dow's sister was in the book of chip slaves. See? What a well put together movie. She, was it wasn't a sex slave? She was a chip test subject. That his dad. What are the chances that his dad? Zero. The chances are zero that his dad would be investigating something that her sister just happened to be involved in. That he happened to be doing security for when he accidentally <laughs> got injected. It's the stupidest, most coincidence-based plot 
of all time. But, <laughs> but then we get one of my favorite moments of the movie, right? Uh, when he texts the doctor and the doctor texts him back, apparently they were tracking the dad's cell phone. That was the magic that Eric Roberts just produced. Um, <laughs> and this extra in this scene decides he's going to do a Cockney accent <laughs> to let them know. So sloppy. <laughs> do not watch these movies, but if you can find this scene out of nowhere, this one extra goes, Oi, governor, the cell phone done a bingy, and then never speaks again. He obviously was just like, I really need this for my reel, so I'm going to show off my accent work here. <laughs> and that is the entire job of one of like five just extra computer guys that are also there that do nothing except for this one guy who does that. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so, so yeah, the bad guys track the, the text message from Chad to the doctor, or the doctor to Chad, and they send another henchman to go find the, to Chad and Dow at the airplane hangar or wherever they are. And I wanted so badly for her to be lying on the ground in the airplane hangar and him to be sitting behind the door of the airplane. <laughs> hangar. That's just the plan they do with all of the henchmen. <laughs> He just hits him with an airplane, knocks yeah. him out. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this henchman shows up at their little warehouse and he's so not intimidating. He's supposed to be like this, like ex special ops guy. He looks like, he looks like the almost white black guy they'd hire for TV shows in the nineties so that white people wouldn't be scared. Th th <laughs> that's who we're looking. Looks like he should be dating Joey in season nine of friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he shows up and, uh, they're not there. They, they've just left, I guess. Right. And, uh, so he calls back, uh, Warren and Warren's like, okay, well, I'm calculating a six block radius based on their running speed, which I know. Yeah. So <laughs> what, like, what the hell's happening? Even if that number's accurate, how is that helpful to know six block radius? The henchman's going to like build a circular wall seven he's blocks gonna, out in all directions. What he's going to run do? in a spiral at. 3.14 <laughs> times the speed, right, of them starting at the center outwards and then he'll catch them by definite, right? And then how yeah. that? No, that's, that's what pi is defined as what Eli so, just said. Yep. Three, three, it's 3.41596. Multiply by the spiral if you walk <laughs> around, if you spiral out, that's how you get off, cover a whole circle. There you go. A little bit of math for you guys. Little math, little math. See, these are the things you get. So, so he doesn't find them. Meanwhile, Chad and Dow, they go to the park to meet the doctor, uh, but the doctor thought it was his dad. So when the doctor sees him, the doctor runs away and they're chasing the doctor. But that's when the bad guy shows up at the park for no reason. And luckily the Asian stewardess lady just Hits him with a giant block of wood that's sitting in the middle of the park. Very convenient. And, yeah. And they escape. <laughs> yeah. There might as well be a spandex outfit and a steel chair just sitting there right next yeah, to him. Exactly. A frying pan. And a, fr <laughs> a frying pan. She just plucks one off the frying pan tree. Pang. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so they get away from that guy, but uh, the other two henchmen find them uh, leaving the park and start chasing them. So now right. we're going to get a chase scene. Right. And they're, they're on a motorcycle rickshaw cab. <laughs> yeah. Right. So they, they hail a, a rickshaw cab, start driving away. At, at the same time, we see that Warren finally hacked the Avanti server. So the bad guys can track Chad's arm chip from now on. That's yes. going to be important or, or not. I don't and, know. And now it's a motorcycle race. And, and I want to say the only reason they had this scene is one of the actors who's like, you know, Lucifer, the bad barrier, whatever, can do a flying cartwheel over a small thing. <laughs> and he does it for no reason. They're like running after this motorcycle and he just like, whip, jumps over the motorcycle. And we're like, oh, OK, that's why we had this scene <laughs> because they they're running as fast as this motorcycle. They're like catching up with this motorcycle. He literally does a parkour flip over a rolling apple cart that gets in the way. It's my favorite. Oh, oh. <laughs> so good. So yeah, they, they, uh, they run away some more and now they hop onto a, a motorcycle, Chad and Dow. Now, okay. Question for you, Eli. If you're running away from, from people and then you get on a motorcycle, 
Are you driving the motorcycle onto a street in the, the outdoors or uh, are you driving it into a crowded building, into, into a mall? Into a crowded building, definitely. Into okay. a mall. Absolutely. Really? Is there like a, yeah, is there like a, a Forever 21 that I can drive my motorcycle there around is. in a very there small circle? That's what I want. Yeah. That is what I would be. That's the best place to lose right. people with a vehicle. <laughs> so so that, that's what this movie that's what does, happens. luckily. That's luckily. what happens. <laughs> and they have the slowest motorcycle chase ever through. He's just walking it. He's, He's walking just doing it. that weird waddle He's walk. He's doing like, the, eh, the awkward eh. motorcycle walking it. <laughs> At one point he does like the awkward like left, right, left, right. Like, oh, are we dancing with somebody walking the other way? It's so stupid. And this is how stupid this movie is. He does the like, uh, uh, uh she goes one direction. He goes another. The two henchmen chase him off screen and we get off screen fighty fight (laughs) off screen like the two henchmen chasing him and she's sitting there like oh i hope he's okay and then he walks out and it's like see i won (laughs) (laughs) yep that's what happens we do not get to see the fight at all um i guess the the fight choreography wasn't up to the standards of david a.r white so they didn't show it not a not a great sign but don't worry, we might just get to see Chad do some overconfident dad karate in Act 3. <laughs> yeah, okay. I look forward to that. Although, we might just skip Act 3 because it's fucking awful. So, let me give whatever the next segment is about the hard sell. Which race is best? Asians. Which religion is best? Buddhists. <laughs> Which sexual orientation is best? Bisexual women. <laughs> Well, I was going to say find out the answers to these questions is <laughs> more, but uh, you just heard them. So when we come back, uh, maybe we'll talk about Act 3. Still not sure. Bring him before me. Hey, what's up, buddy? Oh, God damn it! You again? Yeah. What is this, like five times in a row? Oh, uh, God. Who knows? So, so, uh, wow. All right. So you're the one who's been hiding my chip from me, huh? Well, uh, a dying guy technically injected me, but yeah, you got the idea. Ah. Uh. Fool that you are, don't you understand? Nothing can stop my plan of the mark. See? <laughs> um, hold on. I- is that your poster? Oh, yes. You're glorious, isn't it? Um, <laughs> y- you misspelled mark. What? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's M-A-R-K, not... <laughs> M-A-R-C. No. Oh, oh my... Holy fucking shit. Yeah. Uh, how... How public have you gone with this program? Oh, God, this is embarrassing. Literally, literally the entire world, Heath right? Literally really? the entire world. Yeah. Not great. Oh, God. Really? Uh, Karen? Karen? No, no, I don't want a shoulder massage. Thank you, though. Uh, did, did this go out? All of it. <sighs> Fuck. Hmm. No, no, Karen. I, d- I don't want a shoulder massage right now, Karen. Thank, thank you. Yeah, thank well, you. uh, that'll teach you, man. Can't just send these things out on a, a lark. L-A-R-C. Really becomes apparent the Stark's reality, huh? I hate you. <laughs> Mark with a C, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> Who has a proofreader? What do I, I, I hire a guy to do the spelling? No. And we're back. We left off. Our hero had just done something off camera that might have been pretty fucking sweet, but there's really no way of knowing. <laughs> oh, they didn't show I, us. Uh, the only way for that to have been lamer would be for him to come out and describe it to Dow. Just go, oh man, he was like, oh, and I was like, whoosh, 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 and then, bah, 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 and she's like, ah, that sounds really cool. <laughs> yes. Sounds nice. <laughs> So now they're just walking around the market and he's got a gun with a silencer like you do, you know. Yeah. Nice little afternoon in the market. And uh then uh Joe Pike shows up and clearly wants like a, a cowboy style moment. He just like <laughs> walks out in front of them. He gets all squinty for no reason. He might as well roll a piece of tumbleweed across before he gets there. <laughs> and Chad just shoots him in the arm. Just like, oh, no. Pip. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why so, he doesn't. Oh. Try to kill him, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's a very weird moment. So yeah, he, he shoots him in the arm. Joe Pike falls down and uh, then pulls out his gun and 
goes to to shoot Chad and Dow, even though that doesn't make sense to the plot because he can't kill them. He has to get them alive. But they're gone in a literal cloud of smoke (laughs) out of nowhere. There might as well be a Dow and Chad shaped hole in the wall where they were (laughs) for how silly that fucking scene is. (laughs) Yep. And then, uh, pretty amazing timing. Uh, one second later, Joe gets a call from the Antichrist. Right. And, uh, who's getting a sweet shoulder massage? He is. I Uh, really wanted one right then. Ah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, There is nothing, oh, nothing better than a shoulder massage. And I was hating uh, the movie so much. I had so much rage inside me at this point. Oh, I was really jealous. And if you listened at the interstitial and gave us your money, we could afford a full-time shoulder massage. <laughs> so, Patreon. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, let's add that. Let's put that, let's slot that in before the other stuff we said. That's that's Thank the next you. one. Good. Yes. And he does a good threat here. He's like, oh, you're going to burn in fire and all blah, blah, blah. It's not as good as filling your mouth with your mother's feces, though. Can I just say, like, <laughs> Vigo got us to filling your mouth with your mother's feces and anything else is kind of going to be worse. Yeah. This is more like, I'll read you my middle school poetry about pain <laughs> and despair if you don't get chat. Black darkening hurts. Your arm hurts. <laughs> Roses are black. Stupid. Stupid. Uh, <laughs> stupid. Okay, stop. Damn I'll it. find them. I'll find them. This is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> did you like it? Do you have any notes? No, it's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so so we cut over to Chad and Dow, and they're now in a different building. Just some other one again. Right. Again, for no reason. And he explains that his dad was always getting involved in stuff, so they always had a, a special code for, like, the next place the movie takes place. Literally, he's just like, oh, he always <laughs> exactly. had a a code for that's where we're going. This this is the Google map on my phone, and now the plot makes sense again. It does not. There's it's complete nonsense. I have no idea why any of this is pointing us where they go. <laughs> Unbelievable. And uh this is also where we get a, a quick news update. The Antichrist has a plan. The answer to the global economic collapse is a GPS in everyone's arm. This yep, is when he announces Mars that. In everyone's arm. And let's point out, Philip Turk is not a world leader. He's just a billionaire. Can billionaires, I mean, well, one of them can, but can billionaires <laughs> generally just go to the G20 and be like, here's my idea. How about everyone gets an Apple Pay in their <laughs> dick? Let's put an Apple Pay in everyone's dick. Who's in? Huh? It makes Votes. no sense. It, <laughs> it would make more sense to chop everyone's hand off and just like staple a gold bar onto their arm and they would <laughs> shave it every so often and pay for like, I don't get what like Obama takes over in 2009 and he's like, all right, we're going to end this financial crisis. Everyone just check in with me every couple hours and tell me your <laughs> coordinates and uh, uh, sh- we'll solve me this. A text. You can share your location. Yeah. Just go to my contact in the I. And then, yeah, share location infinitely, literally infinitely. No, it's yeah. a sh- it's a shared Google Doc. I share <laughs> I sh- I shared all of you. I shared everyone. Google. I've got a Google Doc. I'm just gonna put the clip up. Wait, you, which which email address are, are you guys using? I'll share. All right, I'll share it. To, I'll share it to everybody. Yeah. So, so that that's the plan is GPS in everyone's arm. Also, credit card maybe. I don't know. That's gonna fix everything. But the movie decides to outstupid itself, right? <laughs> this is where Chad thinks yeah. of for the first time, you know what I'll do? I'll cut off the blood supply to the chip <laughs> by tying a scarf around my arm. Now, this is very important. Do you think the people who wrote this movie think that when you tie a scarf around your arm, the rest of the blood in your body continues to circulate, but there's no blood in that arm anymore? It's none. It's zero. They definitely think that. There's no other way to explain why they would have this little piece of plot. So stupid. But it works. It works. The bad guys lose the tracking signal all of a sudden because he has a tourniquet around his arm. Yeah. But uh the problem is that releases poison from the chip that's not working anymore into his bloodstream. The chip doesn't work, but it does work enough to release poison, and he starts uh starts passing out. He gets the wobbles. And again, this movie is so sloppily written that he gets the wobbles and she's like, oh, don't worry. We're here. And they're there. They're at the doctor 
from the park. Like they, the moment he started to get the wobbles, it's like, oh, good thing we were half a block away. If we <laughs> yeah, were right. a block and a half away, you'd just be dead on a street corner. This is very good. This is the doctor's office is right here in this warehouse building that looks exactly like the bad guy lair and also our random hiding spot from before that we rented. So <laughs> they, uh, they're at the doctor's place and but by the way, is the doctor a good guy or but he worked for Avanti? Is he a good guy or a bad guy? Uh, what? Pretty sure not a good guy, right? Wasn't he part of the chip program? Yeah, he was implanting Lojack on child sex workers that he got from triad pimps. I think he's yeah, a bad a, guy. Right? Not a good character, but a, but in this movie, he's a good guy. All right. <laughs> All so right. He, he, he starts fixing up Chad and, uh, well, at gunpoint. Dows- right. And I got to say, holding a gun on someone while they operate is just asking for a Pulp Fiction moment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, he did a pew pew. pew. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. And there's this, there's this stupid bit of dialogue. She goes, how do I know you're not going to kill him? And instead of saying, uh, cause if I killed him, you'd shoot me with your weird silenced gun that you're holding on me right now. <laughs> he goes, you're just going to have to have faith. Faith. Really? <laughs> faith. Faith. Are you, are you a stupid Christian now? Can I say faith? You yes. are. Great. Great. Yeah. yeah. Okay, faith great. Is yeah. Why. Awesome. Cool. Cool. Did nice. you do a flashback for like 25? I did do a flashback for like, yep. <laughs> I okay. did. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> so yeah, he's fixing up Chad and then we go back to, uh, Warren at the computer lair trying to figure out why the, uh, signal turned off on Chad's tracker. And listen to how stupid the opening line of this is. Eric Roberts is in his cell and he goes, you look worried. And Warren goes, you can't see my face. <laughs> And I wanted Eric Roberts to be like, good point. That is a, a bad line. That is a bad line. Uh, this is also where we get a montage of uh, news people from every oh country God. of the world explaining why the GPS arm chips are going to save the world or something like that. This is so amazing, right? All of the stereotypes are being stereotypical in their TV stations. The British gentleman is <laughs> saying this. And then the Chinese person is speaking Chinese. And the French person is speaking French. And <laughs> then they cut to Detroit and they've got a black guy it's talking. Clearly a black they do guy. It. Like, hey man, how you doing? You gonna do the fucking we're gonna get on this fucking thing with the one unity. <laughs> uh, also, just just to review, the races are white Chinese, Latino, Arab, French, Nazi, and women. Those are the yep, seven women. races of the world. <laughs> uh, and, and in the sort of speech he's giving, he goes, yes, uh, and we will all achieve the social justice of the mark. And there's this <laughs> pause. Right. <laughs> and I just wrote in my notes, my life in a nutshell. <laughs> I want to see the writer's room when they came up with that. They were like, all right, let's brainstorm the Antichrist. What's he like? Name some like terrible Antichrist qualities. And they're just like, European, uh, world peace, uh, <laughs> SJW cock. And yeah. that's, that's what they did. And we found him. So they went with. So, uh, we find out the UN's about to vote on turning the, the world into one big country and making, uh, the Antichrist the king. Then we cut back to the warehouse where, uh, the, do- the doctor's warehouse, not the bad guy's warehouse or the not clear whether he's a bad guy or a good guy, the doctor's warehouse. And he took out the poison from Chad. He's going to be okay. And he also gives Chad a, it's, it's so ridiculous. He gives him this giant, like hot topic man bracelet that goes yeah, over iron the chip. shackle. Yeah. <laughs> to block the signal. And he, and he makes like a cheat on your wife joke. He goes, yeah, and, uh, they started making these because they knew men wouldn't always want their wives to know where they were. Whoa. <laughs> huh? A little bit of the yaggity, yaggity, yaggity. But seriously, folks, it's just, it's just Dow in there. She's like, all right, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> just throws a drink at him. <laughs> <laughs> and Dow's yelling at Dr. S about the girls who got killed in the chip testing. Cause obviously right. she's mad about she's her like, sister. Oh, you killed my sister that one was my sister and he's like wait no 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 she was never implanted and and she's like wait she was never implanted and he's like yeah what a weird (laughs) awkward extension of the plot to shoehorn in (laughs) like we just put her picture in there to confuse people i guess that's you i guess you got confused. weird awkward sorry about that it worked 
Now that I think about it, <laughs> am I a good like guy a or a bad guy? <laughs> really not sure. Ask David. Yeah. He's confusing. I'm going to fake cry over here for a second <laughs> and scene. So, <laughs> Yeah. So now we have this super awkward her waking Chad up scene. And she's like, Chad, 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 you said we could get breakfast. <laughs> you want to come get breakfast and meet my <laughs> shitty friends? I wanted Dow to introduce Chad to her shitty friends so badly. I was like, this is Plow. Um, she's an arts major and really weird and aggressive about everything. Like you can't, you feel like you're arguing with her about like what she's going to order. It's really off putting and horrible. <laughs> and this is fragile friend. Uh, she's going to start crying any second. Oh, she's already crying. She's, there, oh, she, there she goes. Yeah, I knew it, I told you. There she goes. And then here's the one who I say is my twin who looks nothing like me and acts nothing <laughs> like me. You're here for the next hour and have to pay. <laughs> Oh, fun times. Fun times. Fun times. Nothing to do with reality. Nothing. Just fun, just fun <laughs> comedy jokes. Just, we're just, we're just our significant making up characters. Friends are awesome. We love them. They're the best. Ah, uh, my Un wife's friends. Mwah! Unrelated topic. Gosh, interesting. <laughs> That's the first word that jumps to mind. <laughs> so uh, now we cut over to the uh, Triad Gang's slave house, where uh, where a new movie is starting. Apparently. Right. Exactly. They're at the laundry slash slave slash chip <laughs> emporium. Yeah. Right. Because apparently there was a meeting among the triads where they were like, well, they're not implanting the girls. So what do you guys want to do with them? You want to sex slavery? N you know what? Yeah. Let's do a laundry. No, laundry. I think we laundry. should. Yeah. Let's diverse. Let's, you know, make some right. cash there. And, the and Chad is looking at them through these teeny tiny, super silly binoculars. And the <laughs> binoculars are making like... Why are they ripping? <laughs> Not like you know what spy spy equipment making like spy 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 like <laughs> vision in hand. It's so it's just got an air horn on either side. <laughs> oh, and th there's this amazing moment. He's looking and he hands the uh, binoculars to Dow, and he's like, "Do you see Mali?" And we see through binoculars, she's looking at a blank wall, literally a blank brick wall, and goes, "No." And then she turns and looks at the first girl and she goes, oh, that's her. Like, yeah, you, you were looking at a wall. I wasn't asking if that wall was Molly. I did not mean the wall. I did not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now later that night for again, no reason because they ran out of daylight is why later that <laughs> night, Chad and the stewardess are going to single handedly save a building full of slaves. <laughs> How? Oh, he's going to smuggle him out in a giant Santa sack, apparently. <laughs> yep. And he goes into, he starts to go in and he's got the gun and she's like, no, Chad, no guns. And, he, and he's like, <laughs> I, I kind of need a gun. What was your plan? <laughs> what did you, what was the gunless plan of rescuing every prostitute slave in this building? Hello. Triad, get, we'd like to rent all your prostitutes no, for a field trip, though, please. <laughs> for a field trip, we'll leave our a shoe as collateral. Like, yep. <laughs> no idea, no idea. But she she's convinced. Okay, they'll bring the gun, and she she does a little prayer. <laughs> right? So stupid. I wanted so bad for them to just get shot by a guard while they were praying. Yeah, it, dear God. Oh, I heard you guys around the corner. Pip pip. <laughs> If the movie ended just like that, it would have been one of my favorite movies that oh we've my, done. Wait, I would have won me back. Would have 100% <laughs> won me. Crazy billionaire money. We could just make the pip pip sound and shut the movie off. <laughs> and by the way, the prayer was so bad, the actor who played Chad literally couldn't help but violently roll his eyes during it. <laughs> it's so bad. Yeah, so they, they start walking into the slave house after this stupid prayer. And by the way, Chad is literally... Doing the whistle thing. He's the whistle, the do 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 do. Inconspicuous whistler music. Yep. Not here to save anybody. <laughs> just walking. And this guy comes out, who we're supposed to assume is a guard, and he murders him. This is a movie where he's run away from everyone, but he will spend the rest of this movie, which, by the way, at this point only has like 30 seconds left. He'll murder everyone <laughs> in this building. 
everyone in this building is just like pew 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 pew. Yep. <laughs> yep. So uh he kills that guy, walks in, uh there's more random clouds of steam and smoke throughout the whole movie with the clouds of steam and smoke for no reason. Yeah. Uh then he shoots another guy. Uh, who, who, it's a great little moment. The guy falls uncomfortably. Clearly the actor was like, oh shit, like now my shin kind of is pressing against my other shin. So he spends like a minute <laughs> adjusting his supposed to be dead legs. We get so to watch that. Long. It's hilarious. <laughs> and, uh, then he, he, so he finally gets to where the, uh, the girls are being held in a little cage and, uh, he grabs the keys from the guy he just shot and unlocks it. And, so he gets all the girls, right? Gets all the girls. And the rest of the girls are like, no, we can't leave without the final girl. She's downstairs. And you can see Chad being like, I'm not, uh, not really sure why we can't leave can without not? her. <laughs> Feel like, uh, you know, do what you can, Peter Singer. Right? <laughs> I think we did it. We had a good day. Maybe we come back for her tomorrow. <laughs> Manana. <laughs> huh? Now. No, so Chad obviously has to go eventually save the other one, whatever. Um, before anything happens though, we cut back to, uh, Eric Roberts and Warren again. They're, they're just talking in a fucking room. They're just, they might as well be throwing a lacrosse ball at the wall, just being like, I don't know, man. She says she wants it to be more <laughs> than it is, but it's just been so short a time. And I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. Love is like a flower. <laughs> you get it, Eric Roberts. You get it. And again, this is just like the the first movie. The bad guys take a time out again, just for like a big <laughs> chunk of Act Three. They're just sitting there, so stupid. And, uh, and then we start cutting back and forth. Um, the rescued girls get taken out and put in a van. Doctor drives them away, and Chad goes back for the final uh, slave girl. Right. And Chad, it's important. The only important thing about this scene is his weird "Don't let your wife know you're cheating on her" bracelet, which. One would assume would release all the toxins, but I don't want to get into it. The weird cheating on bracelet falls off. So now the bad guys will be able to find him. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, so now Joe Pike gets involved at the lair. He's, uh, giving Eric Roberts a, a stern talking to because yeah. I don't know why. Uh, they open up the door to the cage and, uh, Eric Roberts just starts. Talking about how he was like a lot more important in part one. He's just yeah, that's really it. Ranting. He's just like, oh, I was, I was in the, I was really the one of the main characters. In this, <laughs> I'm just sort of a weird Deus Ex Machina. You want to shoot me in the head so I can go do blow in my trailer? And he's like, I do want to yeah, shoot no, you in the perfect. head. Yeah, no, that's perfect. That's what it, that was. Yeah. What I was so going to do. Shoots Eric Roberts. <laughs> so now we cut over to Chad rescuing the final girl, right? And he shoots all the bad guys, but then at the last minute, the final girl, whose name we do not even know, gets shot, and the movie stops for Chad to mourn her. <laughs> it's really it, he's weird. like, oh, why, random Asian girl? I was so invested in her as a character. Uh, I was batting six for six. Now I'm six <laughs> for seven. This room, Yeah, <laughs> there's no reason for this. And then... Dow calls him on his cell phone <laughs> to check in with him during the armed conflict she knows he's in with the triad gang. He's like, hey, like, yeah, I'm actually working and I don't like phone calls even when I'm not. <laughs> cool. Well, you said you'd call. You said you would call. Yeah. All right. We just don't communicate enough. Oh, sorry. Oh, all right. All right. Cool. I, I'm a bad boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get on the phone. 35. How's the gunfight going? Like on a, <laughs> on a personal level, you want to know how the gunfight's going? What? How do you feel about the gunfight? I feel like I don't get to hear about your feelings about the gunfight. All right. Uh, well, the girl's dead. How are you? How, how are your friends that I met <laughs> at brunch? Friends? Oh my gosh. Crying girl and angry girl are fighting again. They're so funny. They're so funny. <laughs> we should go to brunch with them again. <laughs> So they finish up their weird couple's fight about why he was supposed to save her on the phone. And Chad gets on yet another motorcycle to have flashbacks of the entire movie and the last movie. Yep. 
They were like, hey, man, could you do like a minute of face acting while you drive on a motorcycle? He's like, I can do 30 seconds max. <laughs> so they fill it with flashbacks. It's like yep. it's like an essay with block quotes from earlier in that essay. That's this movie. <laughs> and yeah, the last exactly. One. And then uh, we go back to the computer guys who have uh, Chad's tracker signal again because the bracelet's gone. And they're like, he's heading for the docks. So that's where the final shutout. By the way. Apparently the only docks in all of Bangkok. This is a city on a gulf with a river running through the middle of it. The docks. Yeah, that's where the, they're going. The docks is where they're headed. So so all the like shooty bad guys leave and it's Warren and two computer guys. And for no reason, Warren's just like, if you have families, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> He's like, go on. Get out of here, scram. Like, <laughs> like they're all dogs at the end of a 50s movie. It's like Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah, yeah. so weird. I don't want you, you hear? I don't want you at all. <laughs> and, and then, because this movie is fucking insane, he goes, get out of here. And these two guys just like slowly get up and walk out of the room. And as they're leaving, he goes, great job, by the way. <laughs> Such a weird lie. Like, if, if anyone needs a letter of recommendation, just say the word. I'm uh, your guy. Positive reference. I mean that. Solid assistant hacking sitting next to me or whatever fuck you did. You answered that text or you told us about the bingy bing and the weird accent. Yeah. And then uh Warren, he's he's finally like broken down. I guess he's become a good guy now. So he shuts it all down. He shuts down their like evil giant vacuum tube computer system and the tracker's done. Right. And uh, from there, we cut back to uh, the van because you remember they were driving. That's that's still happening. Chad's also driving. It's a thorough job by the movie on driving. We know about yeah. when everybody's driving. Right. And everyone is mourning a character we don't know. <laughs> like uh, whose <laughs> name we don't know. No. Nope. But they, they pull up to the docks and they're going to escape by boat to like a place further down the river. Yeah, right. There's safe house or something. Yeah. And uh that's when uh Chad comes rolling up very casually on on a motorcycle. <laughs> Again, like doing like the slow walk basically. But then out of nowhere there's a Jeep and a I think a different motorcycle like inches behind him. Impossible. Yeah. The space time in this movie is insane at moments. They shared an easy pass toll. Like it was just like, <laughs> oh, this motherfuckers. Are, oh, bad guys. So they have an incredibly boring uh gunfight, which again, he shoots a car with a gun. Literally the car is just headed towards him. He is on a motorcycle. The car <laughs> is headed towards him. He just shoots straight at the car. Just pat, 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 pat. And then the car explodes. <laughs> He has, the, he, has, he has a pistol. He shoots a Jeep in the hood until it s spins off the side of the dock and explodes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and the, the, the bad guy motorcycle that they accidentally had in the shot disappears because they have no idea what they're doing. And, uh, just as the, the Jeep is spinning off, uh, Joe Pike jumps out just in time. And goes straight into a slow motion walk. The, the editing is brilliant. He's just oh all of a God. sudden walking towards him. So now it's time for the final showdown. And they both get rid of their guns, uh, which is hilarious. And you have to understand, again, I, I don't always recommend watching the, these movies, but just watch this scene. The idea of these two men having a fist fight is too funny. <laughs> right, Chad and I share physical shapes and Pike, the actor who plays Pike, is a real action movie star who can kick above his head, who can raise his arms and touch like above his, it is, it, the, it's like Drew Carey fighting Jet Li. Like there's no reason this should make sense. And indeed, that is how their fight takes place. Yep. So, so, and Joe, the ridiculously cut fighter guy, does, uh, he does all kicks for round one. Apparently he like agreed to play Street Fighter with only one button as like a handicap to be nice. And he's doing right. amazing kicks all over the place. Knocks Chad into some garbage. And Chad literally, cause again, it has to be one of those tit for tad fights. Chad can't kick at all. So his answer is to tackle him and then kick him when he's on the ground. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> also, at this point, this is when Chad picks up a big piece of wood and, oh my god, he, he starts swinging it so, t he swings like a kid who strikes out at T-ball, like, 
Like someone with a dad who doesn't love him swinging this thing <laughs> at this guy. Uh, and the good guy can't grab the first weapon halfway through the fist. It does It's so, so stupid. So stupid. But yeah, so Pike wins very obviously because he's done a sit up in his life. And he's, <laughs> he's doing the like karate kid. I'm going to punch you. No, I'm not. And Chad goes, you can't kill me. I have a higher purpose. <laughs> and And I was like, oh, please kill him. Please kill him. Oh, I wanted a little Asian girl to just shoot them both, and they they learned an important <laughs> lesson. <Yeah. No. laughs> but no, Warren, the hacker who shut down the computer and for some reason is here now, shoots Pike, but not not to death. He perfectly <laughs> shoots him in the thighs. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So uh, they they leave Joe Pike to to bleed out because that doesn't count as killing him and. Now they're all on the escape boat to go to the, the safe house. And this movie is somehow not over. Oh, my God. Right. We get a scene. This is how useless this movie is. There's a scene at the United Nations where a guy comes up and goes, I'm a job creator and we aren't going to let you do this because I'm oh. a job creator. Oh, my God. I create jobs. I I wasn't furious enough <laughs> having to watch this terrible fucking movie and then John Galt shows up to threaten the Antichrist <laughs> so bad and he does a speed rant it's just a list of masturbation buzzwords for religious conservatives it's so sh ah, just like the business community of job creators like myself bootstraps <laughs> Milton Friedman laugher curve taxation is theft <laughs> Antonin Scalia's sweaty forehead oh my god shut up <laughs> oh Oh, it's so good. And again, that scene, no meaning, no purpose. It is literally just so that this movie could shoehorn in the word job creator. Like seven times. It was, ah, oh, the worst. And then uh, Antichrist it offers to <laughs> to bribe the, the businessman guy. But uh, wealthy businessmen can't be bought by billionaires from Europe. That's yep. why you want outsiders in politics. Obviously, it's nothing could definitely. go wrong with any of that. Mm -hmm. And now we cut to uh this movie not being fucking over yet. We cut to one more scene. It's just another scene. And Dow is reading everyone, all the, the girls. They just read the Bible from the beginning. And I wanted so badly for one of them to be like, hey, uh, I'm sorry. Can I go back to sex slavery? I've This book is really... <laughs> I'm going to go back to sex slavery. That was always exciting. <laughs> not boring. You know what I'm saying? And a little less raping than this book. Let's be honest. <laughs> Yep, and then we we close it out with uh, the UN. There are all the UN people, or the the seven races reps, are, are all signing the Antichrist paperwork to to create the new world order. And uh, that's pretty much it. They're and basically they're just setting up part three. They're confident at this point that part three is going to happen. Oh yeah, they were ready. They were ready. We are not doing part three if they make part three. If they haven't made it yet, and when they do, we're there. That is a strong veto. <laughs> now we're tied. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that was horrific. Pretty sure the only good thing to come out of that piece of hot garbage was uh, the new game that everyone should be playing at the bar from now on. And that game is called Who Can Tell a Stranger... I bet you'd look great in my mother's clothes without getting punched in the dick. Oh, fun game. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So to wrap it all up, I'll ask you this, Eli, uh, just in case we feel like evolving the new game at some point. Can you think of a pickup line worse than I bet you'd look great in my mother's clothing? Uh, I consider myself a centrist. <laughs> uh, I, I, I bet you'd look great in my mother's skin. <laughs> No, the centrist one is worse. The centrist one is worse. Never mind. Here's my list of races ranked from one <laughs> through ten. All right. The mother's you don't skin. introduce people to the podcast? Fine. That's fine. <laughs> I think mother's skin is the winner, though. All right. Well, uh, that does it for a review of the Mark II Redemption. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet, because we still need to get you all fired up for next week. So, Eli, tell us what is on deck. Creed of Gold, an anti-federal reserve movie. <laughs> it's a Ponzi scheme. Yep, a teen adventure movie about how the <laughs> Federal Reserve is a giant conspiracy by banks. <laughs> it's going to be 
Amazing. Awesome. So everybody, please just Google really quick. Just look up Federal Reserve. Just take read one paragraph about what it actually is. That'd be great. Yeah. Listen, go on r slash the Donald and just search for the <laughs> figure out. <laughs> All right. Well, with that to look forward to, We'll bring episode 102 to a merciful close. Once again, huge thanks to all the Patreon donors who helped make it all possible. If you're feeling generous like them, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and earn early access to every episode. That also gets you access to 14 and counting bonus episodes on notoriously bad secular cinema like The Last Airbender most recently. You can also help us out with a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all the various social media platforms. And, of course, don't forget to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, The Skeptocrat, and Citation Needed, available on iTunes, Stitcher. Yes, all of them now. They caved. And wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark. And all of that stuff was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Eli Bosnick and No Illusions, who I assure you will be back with a vengeance, I'm Heath Enright, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close r slash the philip with a y insisted he was a master manipulator (laughs) all the good guys were captured by the triad gang about five minutes after the movie ended and now they're all sex slaves check out our rank of the races rank of the races rank of the races All right. This is exciting. I never got to do the count before. One. Two. Two. Nope. (laughs) (laughs) Cut. (laughs) Cut. This is going off the rails real fast. (laughs) We're we're having a bad record. All right. Ready? One. One. Welcome back. Low energy. To- low energy. You gotta-, <laughs> gotta bring him into the show. Welcome back. All right. We'll do it like that. It's the game. <laughs> All right. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC. Copyright 2017. All rights reserved.